Let's bring this project to an end. I started off the case construction by measuring all the components which needed to be mounted onto the case and simultaneously drew crude technical drawings for them. I used those and the software Inkscape to evenly position the cutouts for the speaker, LCD and rotary encoder onto the front piece. After creating a rectangle around those, I achieved dimensions of 148 by 79 mm, which seemed acceptable. With the front as a reference, I created a back side with the same dimensions, a bottom side with a depth of 50 mm and a top side with the same measurements but an additional 7 mm hole for the antenna. Then followed the right sides and finally the left side with the cutouts for the slide switch, the two 5 mm status LEDs for the charging process and the micro USB breakout. Now in order to join those pieces together, later on I used a rather simple locking system. That means I needed to add 6mm of material onto the sides of each piece, which is intentionally the thickness of the beach plywood I will use in a minute. Then all I had to do was creating an evenly spaced square wave pattern on each side and drawing the inverse of that pattern onto the opposite side that will connect with it. The backside though is an exception which does not receive such a pattern in order to make the guts of the radio accessible at all times. But I still need to increase its size to compensate the additional 6mm of the other pieces. Once the design sketch was finally complete, I used Google Chrome to open the SVG files and printed the left, right, top and bottom piece as a portrait and the front and back piece as a landscape. And make sure to not use any margins, otherwise the size of the vector graphics get scaled down. Afterwards I used scissors to firstly cut out the rough shape of all the pieces and then remove the white parts of the square wave pattern. At this point I was capable of checking whether this locking system would really work the way I imagined it and surprisingly it did. Now to cut out the design from the plywood, I used my X-Carve CNC machine. But don't feel discouraged if you don't have access to such machines. You can easily use a glue stick with an elephant on it to stick the paper blueprint onto the wood and use all kinds of saws to follow the outline. I know that it takes a lot of time, but if you also add a drill to create starting points for your saw inside the component cutouts, you can definitely create this case. As for me, I started the easel XCOV control software, imported the SVG files, did some adjustments which portions needed to be removed and which not, and finally added a square around each piece in order to separate it from the wooden panel. Then I started the milling process, which took approximately 3 hours in total and resulted into not that awesome looking straight lines and round edges. But the reason for that was that I used two low taps, which means the material broke free before finishing the job and the milling bit I used was also a size too big. Nevertheless, after knocking off the excess wood shavings with sandpaper, I used a drill to widen the holes for the LEDs, antenna and rotary encoder, used files to improve the cutouts in order to make all the components fit nicely and finally also used files to straighten the sides and making the edges sharper. Since the following test fits turned out to be a success, I moved on by marking the necessary mounting holes for the speaker, LCD and micro USB breakouts and created them all with a 3mm drill. Afterwards I applied waterproof wood glue onto the lower state of the square wave and joined all the pieces together while making sure to always wipe off the squished out glue. With the help of three clamps and a transformer, I let the glue dry for 12 hours before I started to completely remove any excess glue on the wood with the help of acetone and sandpaper. This needs to be done carefully because the following coats of protective oil will not stick to any glue particles, only the wood. After this oil treatment, I fix a telescopic antenna in its rest position and use two component adhesive on the inside to mount it into place. Once that was dry as well, I secured the slide switch with small wood screws, the micro USB breakout, the LCD and the speaker with M3 nuts and bolts and the rotary encoder with its own securing nuts. 
Then I determined which pins of my RGB LEDs are red and green, removed the unnecessary ones and used hot glue to secure them inside the box. Next, I removed the original LEDs of the charging circuit, soldered thin wires in its places, secured the battery with circuit inside the box and soldered the wires to the LEDs we just glued into place. To finalize the charging circuit, I soldered 0.75 square millimeter flexible wire to the micro USB breakout, which connects directly to the input of the TP4056 circuit. Because the following charging test was successful, I continued by drilling two 3mm holes into the perf board, determined a fitting spot for the circuit onto the back piece of the case and also drilled holes there with the perf board ones as a template. After mounting the board with bolts and nuts to the wood, I connected the output plus terminal of the TP4056 board to one side of the slide switch, while the other side, the negative output terminal and the antenna directly connects to the main circuit. The only thing left to connect was the speaker, and after this was done, the radio was theoretically complete. But the backside obviously does not stay in place yet. For that, I glued two neodymium magnets 6mm from the edge in the middle of the back plate with the help of two component adhesive. After finding out the attraction polarity of the other two magnets, I glued those two accordingly inside the box with a bit of hot glue and afterwards, just as before, with two component adhesive. 12 hours later, the glue was dry and the back side snapped nicely into place almost by itself. Even after restoring the initial mounting of the main perf board to the wood, the magnets do their job without a problem. And just in case you're curious, switching from the TDA1905 to a pre-made Class D amp only requires 4 more wires, additional 10 minutes and delivers decent audio quality as well. And with that being said, this project is complete. I hope you liked it. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Consider supporting me through my Patreon campaign to keep such videos coming. Stay creative and I will see you next time.